hi and welcome back to my channel as I do today's whipping chat and yes I think I'm three for three three days in a row maybe even more I thought I would talk about a book that I just read a couple of days ago and yes I've read a couple of books since then did you know me book after book after book and this was called Frizzy by Clarabel A. Ortega and this is a middle grade YA book that was just so apropos for today's day and age and there are so many ways that I want to talk about this book that I don't want to wait until October to talk about it I want to talk about it right now and why do I want to talk about it right now well some of us have seen the trailer for the new Little Mermaid coming out in 2023 and it's played by Halle Bailey, a young black girl. And there's so much controversy about a black mermaid. So I decided to YouTube it, you know, look up YouTube and see what some of the thoughts are on a black mermaid. And one of the videos I found was by Trevor Noah, who wrote an amazing book that I read about two or three years ago. He's from South Africa, from a born of a black mother and a white father, and in his book, and no, I can't think of the name of it right now, but we're going to look it up because I think you should read it. So what is Trevor Noah's book? Trevor Noah, what is his book? I cannot think of the name of his book, and it was so good. Okay, it was called Born a Crime. Oh, actually, it looks like he's got three books. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'll be getting his other books today. Definitely. So, I read Born a Crime, and he is a... First, he was a, a comedian. Now, he hosts The Daily Show with Trevor, Trevor Noah. And I'm sure he's all over the place, because I certainly found him very easily on YouTube and watched him for like an hour today. Why am I bringing up Trevor Noah, The Little Mermaid, and having this discussion after reading Frizzy by Clarabelle A. Ortega? Well, let's start. Now, this might be less diamond painting and more notes. Let's look at a couple of pages from... It was a manga, I guess manga. And I printed a few of the pages, and I want to put these pages somewhere on my wall or in my planner, somewhere where I can have them forever, okay? And there are the five topics I want to talk about. Five topics. Where are you at? I want to talk about Little Mermaid, Black versus White YouTubers, how Taylor won Big Brother on the CBS television show, black excellence, even rejecting black excellence in colorism. Okay? So, in Frizzy, this little girl, every Sunday, her mother dragged her to the beautician and her hair was washed, shampooed, conditioned, uh, curled, blow-dried, straightened, everything to the point of making it completely straight. And one particular weekend was her cousin's quinceanera. And her cousin had beautiful, long, straight locks. Her mother even had long, straight locks. But our little girl wanted to embrace her frizzy hair. But the thing is, her mother was not going to have it. And one day, after the quinceanera, the little girl took a shower, and with the humidity in the shower, it made her hair really, really messy. And her mother was like, you're not going to school like that. Get over here. I'm going to braid your hair. And she's like, mommy, no. It's going to make my ears, ears look like an alien, like a UFO. You can't. Well, get over here, young lady. Okay, so mom braids her hair. So she gets on the bus, and of course the kids start making fun of her because her ears are sticking out. And she's with her best friend. I think it's Carmella, but she's with her best friend. 
and they she takes her braids out and they try to style her hair well what happens her her hair turns even more frizzier than it was in the shower so when she gets to school everybody's making fun of her and she ends up getting in trouble with the principal and with her mother and then she goes off and she spends a few days with her mother's sister her auntie or her tia because of being Hispanic well, I thought to myself, how is this book going to help me? Because I am, you know, for the most part, African-American. Although, if you know me well enough, you know that I don't like that term because none of my relatives are from Africa. My relatives are from the islands, from Canada, from Syria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's neither here nor there. And that's why we're going to talk about colorism later in this video. So, somewhere in the book, and I don't, I didn't print this particular page, but... It was very interesting because her aunt tells her that their ancestors were from Africa, which I didn't know that. So, there are some things that I thought were of interest in this book. And let's just pull a couple of pages out. Oh, I wish I had them in order, but would I, would I be me if I wasn't organized? She says, why don't we like our hair? because of something called anti-blackness. Anti -black oh, I did print this one. Anti-blackness, even though our own whole family has black ancestors, sometimes people don't like that part of themselves. I guess I don't, since I just said I don't like being called African-American, but after reading Frizzy, guess what? I may embrace that term. I knew other people didn't like black people sometimes, but I didn't know this. So this is her auntie. And if you notice, her auntie's hair is curly. Her hair is braided because her mother sent her there with her braids in. So her auntie teaches her how to manage her curls so that she can embrace those natural curls. Now, she's about to go home. No, her auntie has taken her to school. She spent the weekend with her aunt, and now she's going to school. And this is before she goes home and her mother sees that she kept her curls. And she says, well, what if they still make fun of me? And her auntie says, you didn't do this for them or anyone else. She did it for you. Are you happy? The little girl goes, yes, I really love it. And then she says, well, then tell them to kick rocks. And then the last frames I want to talk about is how when her mother was constantly getting her hair done every Sunday, she said, I had to make sure not to sweat too much or get too dirty or play too rough. And sometimes I hated everything and everyone, but especially my stupid hair for not being what it was supposed to be. And then she's talking to her mom. This is before, this is before she goes to her auntie's house. And she says, so we straighten our hair so people will accept us? In part, yes, her mom says, and because it looks more professional. That doesn't sound right. Well, as you get older, apply for jobs, try to make friends, even meet the love of your life, you'll understand. So, those are the only frames that I printed. They're, they're, this uh, comic was about 224 pages. Now, the reason I'm making this video, and I am bringing up YouTube on my iPad, I'm going to try to diamond paint while I talk to you, is about a week ago, a video came up in my feed where a, a young black girl, I think she's about 13 or 14, entered a pageant, and she did not place in the pageant. And it's okay for someone not to place because everybody cannot place in a pageant. But her parents were driving home, the, the three of them were driving home. I'm going back to the video and I'm going to turn my uh, iPad down so when I bring it up. Her parents were driving home and the, the parents are reading through the notes of the judges. And guess what the notes said? I'm gonna, this is my iPad right here, guys. See? Is my iPad. Oh, it's not really going to show because I have it on uh, night mode. The LA pageant judge said, natural hair not finished. Finish hair. And therefore, she didn't get placed. So, this 
man, Roland S. Martin, he interviewed her and her parents. And guess what? Natural hair, oh, here it is. I found the page. Wait, let me just see if I can read this. I have that on the boom arm. Oh, I just lost it. It's gonna try to. There we go. Right here. Okay, and I'll try to remember to link this in the description below. She did not place in that pageant because her natural hair was not finished. And. I saw that video before I read Frizzy, so when I read Frizzy, I had to go back and rewatch that video. So it made me think about a lot of things. One of the things it made me think about was black excellence. And black excellence is something that has mixed opinions on. On the one hand, black people have to work really, really hard to prove themselves really they have to work harder than their white counterparts that's historical and it's daily and it's very unlikely to change in today's climate that we live in of course we all know about black lives matter but we're not going to go there but yeah black excellence so i thought about that with regard to that little girl who didn't place in the pageant because her hair was natural and um, if I remember correctly, I will screenshot her into this video. Oh, I can't because I'm using my webcam and I don't know a lot about editing. Well, so I can't include the screenshot, but I can include the link to the video. So I thought about the Little Mermaid because of the controversy with her being, uh, the role was given to a young black actress. And so Trevor Noah had his comments about that, which were hilarious because people want realism. He goes, you want realism for a crab under the sea or an under the sea fictional character that's based on fantasy? So that was kind of hilarious. I need to put some more uh, wax on this pen. So let's just drop these drills in. So then I thought about that subject that I raised last week about the inefficiency of black YouTubers getting uh, the notoriety they need. Now, there are some black YouTubers that are booktubers that are successful, but the percentage is extremely low, extremely low. And then I wanted to touch base with Taylor on the t in a CBS television show, Big Brother. Now, Taylor wanted to be, wanted to make history as the bl first black woman to win regular Big Brother. And I say that because I think a black celebrity won Celebrity Big Brother, okay? And last year, I think it was Xavier, a black man, that won Big Brother. So two years in a row, black people have won Big Brother. Well, why is that important? Well, the Big Brother house was tainted by racism and bullying this year and Taylor was the victim of the bullying and then one of the victims of racism now the house guests that displayed racism it seems as if his actions weren't based in in, in hatred or inherent racism they were based on ignorance and I love what Taylor said I'm not here to educate you she was not placed on that show to educate a 29 year old former Mormon our uh, insulated protected sheltered white young man I think that everybody should educate themselves no matter what walk of life you travel down and unfortunately for that young man, this is going to be something that's going to be with him for a long time because America is not quite pleased with his actions. Although he did place in America's top three of America's favorites. So maybe we're going, we were a little bit more forgiving than he expected. And I don't have any judgment against him. I mean, he can't help it if he was sheltered and 
lived in a Mormon church his whole, pretty much his whole life in, uh, in Utah where the black population is very minimal. He, he can't help that, but what he could help is being educated enough to understand that some of the comments that he made were perceived as racist. So the show became a lot about protecting Taylor from the bullying and also with her desire to be the first black woman to win Big Brother. And she did, and her speech was excellent. And I'm going to try to remember to include that in the description below. Now, I saw another YouTube video which was about rejecting black excellence. And I want to talk about what black excellence is really quickly. Where is this? Find it in my notes here. Yes, yeah, sometimes I need notes. Now, black people, okay, I read a book, oh my goodness, I should have looked that up, but I read a book that talked about this about two years ago, and I don't remember the name of the book. But in any event, I found an article on Harper's Bazaar on when I Googled it, and it basically says, we're alone now, I want to say. I know, too, how well black folks navigating white spaces have had to prove their worth and humanity by flaunting their intellect. But I also know what we risk when we stop stunting, even in the presence of one another. I just want to talk about that. My son posted something on Facebook a few weeks ago, and he said, I speak three languages. I speak black English, white English, and I forgot what the third English because black people have to act a certain way to get by in this world. And sometimes when we're with other black people, and I married a black man, I have black children, and I am black, okay? We, we have to conduct ourselves a certain way. But when we're around white people, then sometimes we have to shift some of our behavior. Now, I, I won't say that I do because I am not a young black man in today's world as my sons are young black men in today's world. I am a 61-year-old grandmother who has some a lot of life's experiences, so I don't have to conduct myself like maybe some of the young people have to in this world. But all of us as black people know what it's like to go into a store and to be followed by people that work in the store simply because you walk into you, you're walking while black that's an expression what are you guilty of walking while black driving while black you've you've heard of those things if you're black then I just wanted to touch on something else colorism colorism is when a dark-skinned black person is judged based on the dark tone in their skin. So some black people get treated better if they have a lighter skin tone, if they have straight hair, which is the book Frizzy that started this thought process for me after I read the book, is if our hair is straight, if our skin is light, we, we do have an easier time. But there are times when there is reverse colorism. And this was based on when I was younger, I went to a congregation. Now, I didn't start off in a black congregation. I started off in a, I started off in a mixed congregation, but then my mother moved to the south side of Chicago. When she moved to the south side of Chicago, it was a 100% black congregation. And then I started having children. And because of the mixed race in my family, a couple of my kids came out pretty light skin. And they had been making fun of me for years in the congregation. But when I had my son, they called him a little white boy. And then years later, when I had one of my daughters, they, they said, who's her daddy? Because she came out very light skin. And People just look at your skin tone and they want to judge you. And so this this book, 
I want this book to get into the hands of as many young people as it can. I, I am not good at promoting beyond sharing on, say, like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Amazon, Goodreads, NatGalley. Beyond that, I don't, I don't promote. Um, that's not my job. My job is to review books. But this book was so good that it raised all of these issues with me. The colorism, the little mermaid, the little girl who didn't place in the beauty pageant because she had natural hair. And now that I realize that I can't include a screenshot because I'm using my webcam and I haven't fully taken the time to uh, learn how to edit, just want to show you her pretty little face. There she is with her natural hair. Hopefully that's clear and her mom also has natural hair. Okay. Let's see if we can get a better, oh, I was trying to get a better picture of the family without the host. There we go. Okay. She did not place in the, in the pageant because of her natural hair. So like I said, I saw that video maybe a week or even two weeks before I read Frizzy. And I, and the funny thing about Frizzy is I selected Frizzy maybe six months ago on NetGalley, just on virtue of the way the little girl looked in the screenshot. And I'll show you. Let's, let's bring her up. So all I guess I want to say is let's just be aware. Can we all be aware? And the last thing I'm, 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 while I'm, I'm talking to you, I'm bringing something up. One thing that I noticed with me, just with Robin. Oh, and I forgot to put my mic on. I hope that you guys can hear me okay. Oh my goodness, this would be a waste if you can't hear me. Okay, let's bring this up. So when I saw this cover about six months ago I had to choose this book for review I had to now <clears throat> there's two more things I want to talk about first thing is anybody that knows me knows that I keep my hair short no more than an inch or two and I have naturally curly hair not 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 like that long curly locks but just curly like very very fine hair and that just plays into my ancestors every time I cut my hair one of my sons says no ma not again he wants me you remember the little girl I showed you the one that was in a beauty pageant one of my boys wants me to let my hair grow out he wants me to let my hair grow out he's like mommy will you do it for me just at least once so I don't know if I'm gonna do it because I'm the one who I cut my own hair so I don't know if I'm going to let my hair grow out, but after reading, oh, I need some more wax. After reading Frizzy, I, I might let my hair grow out. And the last thing I wanted to talk about on the line of colorism, the little girl with the natural curly hair, the book Frizzy, Taylor placing first on Big Brother, and any, any of the subjects that I've already touched on, is... I deal with a lot of professional jealousy as a book reviewer and as a crafter. A lot of professional jealousy. And sometimes I wonder if the professional jealousy that I deal with is either A, because I'm so boisterous when it comes to what I love, or could it be something more serious? Could it have to do with race? So I went to a group where I have a problem where I get bullied and I went back to about a year on that group and I read comments that have been made and directed to me in in that particular group going back a year I just on Sunday that's what I did and that's when I decided to Google black excellence. Either we have to prove ourselves by being more acceptable in today's world 
or we have to mold ourselves but not get out, step out of our own lane. And I think I step out of my lane too much in, in everything that I do. And so I don't know if this video is going to see the light of day. I really don't, especially once I realized that I didn't put my microphone on. But please, when you get a chance to buy Frizzy, please support the author and the illustrator and put this book in the hands of your young people. And for those of us who have black daughters, black granddaughters, black nieces, let us embrace our natural heritage. And I do have three black daughters. And I will say one thing about all my girls, all three of them, is not a single one of them straightens their hair. They, all of their hair is natural. Two have natural hair and one has dreadlocks. One of the ones with natural hair braids her hair about every three or four months. And then other times she just styles it differently. But when I stopped perming my hair about 10 years ago, so did all of my girls. And from 10 years ago, when I stopped perming my hair, not a single one of my daughters ever permed their hair again. And it wasn't even in agreement. It was just embracing what we have. Now, I have this, like I mentioned, this very fine curly hair. It's so fine and it's so curly that when I cut it, you can see my scalp a lot because it's just very delicate hair. So I don't know how I'm gonna come out if I let my hair grow out, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna say take three or four months and not cut it and see if I can do a little bit of frizzy. And I want to see how I come across. And of interest to me that I found rather interesting is if you go to YouTube, and, I, and again, my volume is down so I won't disturb you, but if you go to YouTube and you look at Trevor Noah, when he started with the Today show with Trevor Noah. You see how he kept his hair short and, 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 and perfect? He kept, he kept his hair the way that it was acceptable. But if you look at Trevor Noah now, look at his hair. Yes, he's letting it grow out in a natural... Oh, wait, come back, Trevor. Yeah, he's embracing that part of himself. I love that. I, I didn't realize that he changed his own hairstyle to embrace. Now, I have one son, the son that doesn't want me to continue to cut my hair, who keeps his hair long and he does various styles with it. And I'm, I'm proud of him for doing that. And my, all, all three of my sons all wear their hair differently. One keeps it long, one pretty much uh, keeps no hair on his scalp at all. He just shaves it. And then another one keeps a natural fade like my husband does. So they each have different hair and keep the hair differently. So just touching on all those things so that I can get the word out there about the book Frizzy by Miss Ortega and giving you my perspective on how it affect, affected me as a reader, as a professional reviewer, as a mom, as a grandma, and as somebody who watched that show Big Brother and saw that racism that was displayed on that show, as someone who has been hearing the murmurs about the Little Mermaid movie coming out next um, in 2023 and how it's not natural to have a black actress playing that role. I mean, there's a lot of thoughts that flow through my mind. So, if I decide to post this video, which I will watch it once or twice before I post it, but if I decide to post this video, give me your thoughts on any of those subjects. And if I left anything out that you think I should talk about in the future, just let me know. But for now, hubby's home with the laundry, so I need to go give him a hand because he had to go to the laundromat. Our dryer is not working properly, so let me go help him with that, and I will let you go. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.